here at Elmo with this small powwow here, Friday afternoon seems to be the best time when the vendors are on site and setting up and getting ready for the evening crowd. 2002, I was invited to set up my fry bread stand on the Washington Mall, and I served 30,000 people a day. Generally, in these powwows, you know, anywhere from 500 to 1,500 people. We've been here for 20 years. Um, every year we've come here, we go to our leave. I enjoy the people. Everybody is different. And we've got people that come from New Mexico, and they're here again this year. And uh, we were in a booth over there last year, and the first thing they've done, they come looking for us. Last summer I did four. I did R. Lee, Hamilton, Newtown, North Dakota, and Spokane, Washington. Well, they say, how goes your fry bread? I said, probably next to your mom and your, or your wife, it's the best in the world. Good food is an essential part of what makes celebrations and powwows so much fun. But keeping food safe can be a challenge for those who prepare and serve food at special events, especially when they're held outdoors. The Arley powwow, we had an estimated 20 to 35,000 people show up at that powwow there. And the number of meals that are being served there, food safety is a, a prime importance. That's what I'm here for, is to make sure that everything is safe and that people know that the stands are being inspected on a daily basis. I belong to the Midwinter Fire Committee and we raise money, you know, to support a, ourselves. It would help us to learn how to handle food safely, you know, so no one gets sick and we can continue on with it. I think with the amount of boosters and the amount of prepared meals on site at a powwow uh, could potentially affect a great number of um, community members and or visitors to that particular powwow. As a sanitarian, I run the uh, Office of Environmental Health, and, and it's my duty to inspect the concession stands. It's done on a daily basis. And you do it, in, like I said, in a tactful way, and uh, you become, try to become friends with them. And I usually do each and every year. I've done it for nine years now. And it comes like a pretty good comes off like a pretty good partnership, you know. I make sure we do have a health inspection so that uh, I know that I'm following all the practices that are important to maintaining good sanitation. And I just generally realize that, you know, if you have good sanitary facilities, then you have good food. If they want to sell food to the public, they need to go to their local health department first to find out what's required and that would really help our job. Once they get there, they cannot um, sell food until they actually see us. We go and check the, the, the food vendors uh, twice a day from Friday through Sunday. And we check for a little bit of everything as far as uh, food services go. Food safety is in your hands. As a food vendor, it's your responsibility to help prevent foodborne illness. Let's look briefly at six areas of concern for vendors at temporary food booths. They include keep hot foods hot, keep cold foods cold, hand washing practices, utensils and contact surfaces, purchasing food from approved sources, and storage of food. Hey, uh Hot food should be kept at or above 135 degrees Fahrenheit to prevent the growth of foodborne bacteria, which can cause illness. Since local standards can vary slightly, please consult your tribal or local sanitarian for temperature requirements. Using a thermometer, check often to make sure the food you're serving is hot enough to prevent bacterial growth. We've had people where they'll prepare the food at their home and then drive 50 miles to their stand and try to sell the food there. And there's a lot of hazards with that because the meat has to be kept hot. Well, it's not being kept warm and they drive it out. It cools, bacteria grow in it, then they try to reheat it, but it may have produced toxin in the food that'll make everyone ill.
Cold foods also need to be stored at proper temperature to keep them safe. By keeping cold foods at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, there's less likelihood of bacterial growth and the food will stay fresher. Customers expect cold food products to taste cold, not warm, or lukewarm. Again, since local standards can vary slightly, please consult your tribal or local sanitarian for temperature requirements. Cold food holding is under refrigerated temperatures, also in ice chests, which can produce the same temperature. But one of the concerns we have is that ice does melt, so we have to make provisions for the food stands to keep their coolers drained and keep fresh ice on hand. The majority of them have thermometers, buy them to keep their meats on the bottom shelves and their vegetables up on top. The best way to prevent the spread of germs is to wash your hands properly. Wash before preparing food, after using the restroom, after eating or smoking, after coughing or blowing your nose, and after handling garbage or cleaning. Use plenty of soap to scrub your hands for at least 20 seconds, including between your fingers and under your fingernails. Hand washing is a big, big factor, and they do have uh, some of the more modern rigs that you see here. Uh, do have the one compartment hand washing sinks here. Some of them that are just set up here on the grounds here uh, typically have just soap and water and disposable towels. I think one of the critical components that I believe is the actual of wearing of gloves and or washing, um, making sure that your cutting areas or your meal preparation sites do not cross-contaminate. Serving food properly will also help keep it safe. Utensils can be stored in the food with the handle extended above the rim. They can also be placed on a clean and sanitized surface. Use separate utensils for each food item and properly clean them after each serving task. Minimize contact with uncooked and ready-to-eat food by using gloves or tongs when serving. Well, we do have a, a requirement, which is to have a chlorine bleach solution mixed up on the grounds and changed periodically throughout the day, and uh, that they periodically change the towels that are in them and scrub down the, the surfaces there where food's being prepared and food's being served. Dust and flies can be a concern when trying to keep serving and eating areas clean. We have several programs to reduce insect infestation, but what we have them do at the celebration is to obtain a netting, which can go around the food service preparation area, and sometimes they even extend that to where the diners will eat. We have uh, fire trucks that come around two to three times a day to water down the ground to take care of the dust. Purchase your food products from sources that have been inspected and are in compliance with local, state, and federal law. Check food deliveries for damaged products, leaky packages, and dented cans, which should not be accepted. Keep raw meat products separate from uncooked and ready-to-eat foods. Under the federal food code, we require that the food that be brought to be served for celebrations is FDA approved or USDA approved, and the packaging has to indicate that. We've uh, had a situation with a vendor at one of the Powell's where he didn't have his receipts for his, his meats, and we're always telling uh, the, the vendors that you know it has to be USDA approved. He had to get uh, proof of his receipts for, for his, where he bought his products. Traditional food is a big thing on a reservation, menudo, it's a big seller, obviously. What I'm thankful for is a lot, of the pe a lot of the people will buy it from the store. It's already been processed and cleaned. Some of the traditional foods that you're going to see at the Powell are tripe that's being served. Uh, we like to have it USDA approved, and uh, a lot of times we could see the packaging that it does come from a store. Food should be stored in designated areas and rotated to ensure that the oldest product is used first. 
in the refrigerator, store raw meat, poultry, and fish separately from ready-to-eat food. Keep the temperature of the refrigerator at 41 degrees Fahrenheit or below. Try not to open the door too often and don't overload the refrigerator. Refrigerators and freezers should be kept in shaded areas out of the sun. Food in dry storage should be kept away from the walls and at least 6 inches off the floor. Store cleaning supplies away from the food area. One of the best ways to learn about how to safely prepare and serve food is to take advantage of food safety training when it is offered in your area. We offer food handling um, courses you know, on, on, on proper temperatures and then how the, the food should be kept and as far as hygiene wise is that we work hand in hand and I, I think uh, that's working out pretty good for us. Deb Haynes, who is the Indian Health Services Field Sanitarian, and I offer food safety training six to eight times a year, depending on the need, in a variety of locations around the Bighorn County. They're generally four to six hours in length and cover all aspects of the ServeSafe program, as well as HACCP. They're fun, they're free, we do lots of hands-on, exciting kinds of things, and you'll go away with more knowledge than you ever expected. My advice is that they should have some type of uh, food safety training. They should be, it should be a required thing before they, before they set up at a, at a powwow. Food handler training really helps increase food safety. The changes I've noticed in food service vending on the Crow Reservation are that the vendors are much more knowledgeable, much more in compliance, and provide a higher level of food vending for the public. A strong partnership between food booth operators, sanitarians, and food safety educators can help ensure that food is safe for the public. Teamwork is very important to have a, a productive and safe food stand at a celebration. I think we're living in a day where we really need to network and collaborate with each other. We don't always have the single resources, you know, so I think it's really important that we put our efforts together to educate ourselves and to educate our, our people, you know, when it comes to handling food and food safety. And they could all work together to prevent, prevent a lot of these diseases from spreading or from happening during the policies. It's our, our mission to protect the health of the public. And uh, it works twofold for the vendor too. They're going to have more business if the public they're serving have food that they feel is safe for them to eat. If they make somebody sick, what's going to happen? They'll be out of business. The biggest thing is to keep our people safe, you know. And people can continue to generate the money that they need, you know, to operate, but at the same time keep the people safe, you know, so that it doesn't come back on us. Because of so many people, you've got to be safe. Because of the elderly and the, and the tots, the babies are so at risk as far as their resistance to, to uh, being, getting sick, you know. They enjoy their food and they, I think they feel safer when I'm around, hopefully. For more information on keeping food safe at celebrations and powwows, contact your tribal or local sanitarian or extension office.